Welcome to 10 Minute Murder, brief and bingeable true crime. Hello, I'm Joe. I'm the host, and thank you for joining today. I feel like I should probably let you all know that I started a new TikTok account. The last one I had got banned for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, they don't. They didn't give me a warning or anything. They just boom, it was gone one day. I didn't care so much because I honestly wasn't doing very much with it. But that is now changing, just in time for TikTok to get maybe shut down in the United States. If they do keep the light on, I'm putting content over there. So if you have a TikTok, hop over there and give me a follow, please and thank you. If this is your first time listening to 10 Minute Murder, please subscribe now so that you can catch up on all the back episodes. Plus, you'll never miss any of the new ones. Connect with me on social media. See the visuals that we're talking about here on the podcast. And if you like this episode, please leave a rating and review on Apple or any place that that's possible. Your positive feedback is very much appreciated. Go to 10minutemurder.com for all things 10 Minute Murder. Now to today's story. By all accounts, Tom Coleman lived a pretty normal life. He'd been married to his wife, Linda, for more than a decade, and the pair were raising their kids together in a small town just outside of New York. Tom worked as a physical therapy supervisor, and as he got older, his life had settled into a comfortable routine. He hit the gym every morning like clockwork. He spent time with his family and friends, and in November 2011, it was no different. After spending time off work and relaxing with his family and watching football, Tom woke up early the morning of November 29th, 2011, and began his usual routine. He headed to Planet Fitness to get a workout done before his day began. But this time, he didn't make it to work. A no-call, no-show was totally out of character for the very reliable Tom, so Linda was immediately worried about her husband. She drove straight to the last place that Tom had been, and found his car still in the parking lot of Planet Fitness. For a moment, Linda was relieved when she spotted Tom still behind the wheel. But when she got a closer look, she realized that something had gone terribly wrong. Tom was freezing cold when Linda touched his hand, and his nails and lips had turned blue. Linda realized that he wasn't breathing, and called 911 for an ambulance. But it was too late. At the age of 44, Tom Coleman had suddenly died, A toxicology report was run on Tom's body and it revealed something strange. There was a drug called midazolam in his system. In BT dubs, I may be saying that wrong. Midazolam is a sedative which can be fatal in high doses, but the levels in Tom's blood were not high enough to be fatal. However, Tom did have sleep apnea disorder, which might have made him more sensitive to the effects of the drug. Regardless of whether midazolam killed Tom, the question remained... Tom wasn't being prescribed any sedatives, so where had he gotten the midazolam, and why was he taking it in the first place? There was another strange factor in the way that Tom's body was found. His belt had been undone, his seat was reclined, and his shirt was pulled up, zipper down, as if he had been having some type of sexual encounter in the car. The DNA of an unknown male was discovered on the inside of his undone belt. Had Tom been meeting someone at Planet Fitness? Maybe even cheating on his wife? Investigators were suspicious, so they pulled the CCTV footage from Planet Fitness. The footage showed Tom pulling into the parking lot at his usual 4.30 a.m. next to another car, a white SUV with an unusual fault in its fog lights. One of the lights hit the ground much more closely than the other. The SUV pulled next to Tom's car and remained there for almost half an hour but the footage did not capture whether either of the vehicles opened or closed their doors. You couldn't really see it. After 28 minutes, the SUV pulled away. Tom's car remained in the parking lot. The strange pattern of the SUV's fog lights matched one car in particular. Dr. Gilberto Nunez, his white Nissan Pathfinder, which had a fault in its mounting that caused one of its lights to dip down. Dr. Nunez was a friend of both Tom and Linda and worked as a dentist nearby. Talking to Dr. Nunez quickly made investigators realize that Tom and Linda's lives weren't all they seemed to be. Gilberto wasn't just a close friend of Tom's, he was also close with Linda. Very close. 
Under Tom's nose, Gilberto and Linda were having an affair, which had continued for almost a year before Tom's death. However, it seemed that the affair fizzled out for Linda. She decided that she wanted to work on her marriage with Tom instead of leaving him for Gilberto. Meanwhile, Gilberto did not share those same feelings. He'd even bought an engagement ring for Linda in the hope that they could start a life together. Strangely, Tom had found out that Linda was sleeping with Gilberto, but he didn't get angry or cut the dentist out of their lives. He allowed the affair to continue, and he kept being friends with Gilberto. Investigators later discovered that Gilberto had actually been the one to tell Tom about the affair. Stranger still, it seemed that Tom hadn't just remained close with Gilberto after this revelation. The pair had actually even become closer friends. Originally, Gilberto denied having any midazolam in his possession, but it soon turned out that he had a supply of the sedative in his dental office. It was possible that he had taken some of his supply and administered it to Tom secretly. As well as this, investigators discovered that Gilberto was aware of Tom's sleep apnea, and his medical training meant that the dentist was aware of the dangers of a patient with this disorder consuming a sedative like midazolam. Also, it's worth mentioning that Tom wasn't the exact picture of health. He weighed 230 pounds, he had an enlarged heart, an enlarged liver, and a history of hypertension, depression, anxiety, migraines, and insomnia. At first, Linda didn't want to believe that Gilberto could have anything to do with Tom's death. He was a trusted family friend, someone that Linda loved. They even celebrated their one-month anniversaries of the day their love affair started. They were the sappy couple that would be like, happy four-month anniversary, and they probably sat on the same side of the table at restaurants. Unconfirmed. But as the evidence mounted, Linda began to confront the possibility that her lover had been the one to kill Tom. Gilberto refused when asked to take a polygraph, which BTW many people look at as a sign of guilt. It could be, but if you, like I have done, delve into the statistics of accuracy and chances of false positive, you wouldn't take one either. There's a reason that they are not admissible in court. No matter the circumstantial evidence, it was not enough to make an arrest, and Gilberto didn't face any charges. In fact, he married three years later after meeting his now wife on a dating site. In the four years that passed since Tom's death, the family had been struggling with the sudden loss. His teenage son, Bradley, committed suicide at the age of 18, less than two years after his dad died. While Gilberto was moving on with his life, Tom's family was struggling and searching for answers. In October 2015, it seemed as if they might finally get the answers they needed. Suddenly, Gilberto was arrested and he faced charges for second-degree murder. At Gilberto's trial, there was ample evidence showing his obsession with Linda. In one of the emails shown to the courtroom, Gilberto told Linda, quote, I'm not going to let you just walk away from me. Never. In his efforts to prevent Linda from ending the affair, Gilberto even told her that he worked for the CIA, sending her a fake government ID as proof. This alone was evidence enough for Gilberto to be charged with forgery, if not Tom's murder. However, the defense had a different argument, insisting that Gilberto wasn't aware that Linda was ending the affair. Besides, he and Tom were close, having texted each other over 60 times in the last few days of Tom's life. Why would Gilberto go as far as killing Tom when their friendship seemed to have survived the affair with Linda? The forensic evidence linking Gilberto to the case was lacking. In fact, there was no forensic evidence at all. None of his fingerprints or DNA were found at the scene of the crime, and the unknown male DNA on Tom's belt was not a match to Gilberto. Besides, even if Gilberto had given Tom the sedative, it had not been a guaranteed fatal dose. They couldn't prove that the intent had been to murder Tom, even though Gilberto had been aware of Tom's sleep apnea, which might have made him more vulnerable to the drug. One key piece of evidence was an email on Tom's phone. It was from a hookup website. He'd received that email at 1.30 a.m. before arriving at Planet Fitness. This supported the theory that Tom had been meeting an affair partner at the gym, but although Tom and Gilberto had been incredibly close, there was no evidence that the email was from Gilberto. The courtroom had to consider that Tom had been meeting a completely unrelated person that morning. The trial dragged on for three weeks, and the ending was unsatisfying for Linda and her family. Dr. Gilberto Nunez was charged with forgery and unrelated insurance fraud. 
but found not guilty of Tom's murder. Linda angrily left the courtroom after the verdict, calling Gilberto psychotic. Gilberto spent two years in Altoona Correctional Facility, serving less than a third of his potential seven-year sentence before he was given back his freedom. His parole will end in October 2023. Ultimately, Gilberto lost his license to practice dentistry, but Tom Coleman lost his life. The question of why Tom died and who killed him seems as if it will remain unanswered. <laughs> 